want to make now is the trace that I use to catch cob. Um, it's literally using glow-in-the-dark foam, high density or soft six and a half doesn't matter. I personally prefer the high density. It makes more noise when you're using the rattle. Now what I'm trying to achieve when I make this bait is first it's a very visual bait. Second of all it works on the lateral line of the cob. Um, the rattles that you use make a very loud noise, a very loud clacking noise which definitely over the years has been proven to attract cob. First of all, these are the items that I'm going to use. 19 to 20 kilo line, and again, a very soft, supple line is very important. It gives the bait a lot of movement in the water. Rattles. These are little glass rattles. And again, you can hear it. it makes it is actually not very loud when you hear it here. But listen to it when I actually put it into foam. Listen to how much louder this noise actually is. What I'm doing is basically forming the foam first. Before I do anything else, I just want to form it to the shape that I want it to be and the size that I want it to be. That basically for a cob is the ideal size. Now I'm targeting cob in the 4 to 10 kilo range. If I was targeting a bigger cob, I'd obviously be using a bigger piece of foam, bigger rattles, bigger hook. I prefer the Ato mustard soy hook because it's offset, it's silver in color. Now it's very important that you try and mimic the bait that you are using. And because we're using chocker, a silver hook definitely works better than a black hook. Okay. To make the trace, figure of eight. Take a piece of nylon. And again, it's only three times around. One, two, three times. There is my figure of eight. I'm going to slide it down now. But I'm not going to pull it tight yet. What I'm going to do is a little trick that I've learned over the past is make what they call a little wishbone at the end here. I'm just taking a piece of nylon, a thicker piece of nylon. I'm now going to stick it in there by the eye of the hook and pull tight. So basically, that's what it looks like. I'm going to cut off the tag end here. Cut this down a bit more. And basically what I've done is I've put a little bit of a, well, what we call a wishbone in it, a piece of nylon. That's going to stop any movement on my bait. So if a cop does pull from the front, he doesn't pull the foam off. Or if you throw very hard, it doesn't slide down your actual hook. So that little thing there is a very big must-have when it comes to cob fishing. Now, what I'm going to do is take round nose pliers. You can either heat it up or you can use a soldering iron. It's up to you. And all we do is we just insert it into the middle of the foam. And you try not break it. So basically I've made a hole through the center. These rattles are very nice in that they've actually got a point on them. I'm now going to take it and stick it into the actual foam over there. Now listen to the difference as far as noise goes. Can you hear that? It's a lot louder than what it was before. The high density foam amplifies the noise. Okay, you happy with that guys? 
Now to attach the foam to the hook, all I'm going to do is measure off where I want it to be. T-bone is over there. That's the middle of it. You can either take a little toothpick and stick it in there if you want, if you don't want to use the T-bone part of it. But I'm going to show you how to do this quickly. Double the cotton. It's just so much quicker and easier to do. And then when I get to the T-bone part of it, I crisscross over it. Now you see that part is actually getting stuck, that nylon piece is actually getting stuck in the cotton. It might be difficult to see on camera, but play with it at home, try it yourself, you'll see what a difference it actually makes. And don't be scared to use a lot of cotton now. When you get to the back part of the, the flotation or the foam, about that far away, what I like to do is wrap it around about six or seven times around. What it does is forms a little bit of a, a bubble on the cotton. And that actually still holds the foam in place even more. And we just carry on going. Guys, like I say, a lot of cotton. Very important. The more you put on, the better it actually works. And then to finish it off, all we're going to do is a couple of half hitches, basically one, two, pull tight, one, two, pull tight, one, two, and you pull tight. There we go. Now that is the trace basically finished off as far as the hook and the flotation and the chocker goes. Now, unfortunately it's very difficult to see, but I'm going to use a UV light to show you how much this glow in the dark foam actually starts to glow. Can you see how it's already starting to go green? Now when you're baking up at night time, your headlamp is automatically charging this foam up. With this uh, trace that I make up, I use a fixed trace, basically using a number four and five power swivel. These hooks are extremely sharp, so the minute the cob actually bites or shakes its head from side to side, when it's trying to kill the chocker, if you want to call it that, he actually hooks himself. And nine times out of ten, you almost get floorboarded by the cob. It is such an easy trace to use, guys. The fish hook literally hooks himself. And that's my favorite cob trace, and that's the secret. Glow in the dark foam with that rattle. It makes a huge difference.